Hello everybody, I'm Storm here, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, uh, we ran a somewhat complex mission to accomplish three different goals. One, to launch a new resource scanning satellite into Mon Orbit, so that we can once again see our resource overlays when needed. And then to deliver a couple of payloads to the Mun uh, station. Uh, one of them being new science experiments to feed more data to the science lab for processing. And then another one to deliver a supply of material kits to the station um, to get the uh, rotating ring section that we installed a while back. Um, inflated and operational so that is all done now it kind of took a couple of launches but we're able to get all of those missions done so that's where we're at and we still need to do some more work for the station um we have a bunch of heavy components that are going to need to get lifted so um that is probably what we're going to start working on today as we wait for maneuver nodes for our deep space probes to arrive. Which, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give them a good look. Two years, yeah, yeah still, still a ways to go. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get in here. Actually, I want to look at what I can do in, in for research because we do have a, a somewhat significant pile of research points available. I really want some advanced photovoltaics, but we're not going to get there. Um, this is the furthest we can get. Heavy command pods. Let's see, N50 service bay, N series, 5 meter size. Okay, so that's a 5 meter size service bay. Interesting. The Pandora advanced command pod. Carries a crew of 4. And the Rhea orbital command pod. Carries a crew of 2. I'm not sure that's all that necessary. We could do field science, uh, which will get us some rover wheels, some rotors. This is all stuff we're going to need at some point here. And we're going to do some more extensive exploration. I am going to need to get aerodynamic stuff, especially if I want to start exploring Eve and Tylo at some point here. What I really want is nuclear fuel systems. Because we need the fuel drums to be able to resupply reactors. Or extend the life of reactors. Let's see, actuators. Fusion power. Okay. Advanced fusion reactors. I don't have any mods installed that use those. Specialized science tech. Long term. Yeah. None of that is used by any of my mods. Oil tanks, mini converter modules, cryogenic atmosphere converters, atmospheric condensers, and then it puts a liquid hydrogen. Uh, 
Interesting. It harvests resources from the atmosphere. Jumbo converter module. That would be really nice. If I could afford it. And I may actually need that. Narrowband scanner. Let's see, what do I actually have? Cryogenic gas separators, I have the Convertitron 250. All right. Well, I think I'll hold on to the science for now. Let's see what I can get here. Okay, so, no, that's not what we're looking for. Construction, no. Um, Convertitron to 50. I think that is a two and a half meter. I think that's two and a half meter. Let's check it. Indeed it is. Two and a half meter. Okay, so that actually is the size that I want. Um, but I don't necessarily need the bigger one. Though, we'll probably want the bigger one at some point. But it's not necessary for now. Alright, what are we looking at? As far as its stats. Core heat. Required cooling. Max cooling. Electric charge, 50 per second, 50 per second, 30 per second. I think this can actually be powered by the, um, the current. This can actually be powered by the current power available on the station because we have what uh, we have these like really big photovoltaic arrays which produce 45 per second we got a whole bunch of them so I was thinking I was gonna need to bring up like a like a heavy nuclear reactor of some sort well, that's a bit too large I don't want the 3.75s like um, like this one that does 3,000 energy credits for energy credits. Electric charge. Wrong game. Um, 3,000 per second. What do you do? 1,000 per second. But if we're not going to need that much, at least not for this converter, for future um, facilities, we may need additional power. But for now, we can just bring this thing up. Okay. That's a piece of cake. All right, so... Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to need a tank of monoprop. That's probably a bit more monoprop than I actually want or need. But it's what we've got. I'm going to need a 
guidance unit. Let's see, what's our mass? 8,000, or yeah, 8, eight tons. Gonna need at least a little bit of power. Let's see, two per second. Yeah, a little bit of power there. It's gonna need some communications. Um, there we go. It's going to need some batteries. I don't have any two and a half meter diameter cylindrical batteries yet. So, these will have to do. Alright, that will work. And it's going to need... RCS thrusters. There we go. Now, down here... We're going to need some structural elements. that one. With this. on there. And then we're going to want docking ports. On all of these. That's right, and then you go on there. There we go. And then we're gonna need RCS thrusters. There, okay. This is the resource converter unit. Or at least our first... Our first resource converter unit. And then we're gonna need, we're gonna eventually dock tanks to these. Actually, we'll probably dock arms to these that were then where the tanks are going to dock to. Alright, so... Total mass, almost 11 tons. I really 
do need to make the larger rocket a uh, sub assembly. Hold on. Let's see, if I put a two and a half meter, no, that's not what we're looking for. I think I can actually set that to be uh, no that's that's not right Put a two, uh, two and a half meter fairing base on there. It looks like it should work. With its own... With its own guidance. Its own batteries and comms. All tucked in there. And then I use the subassembly Gladius Heavy Lifter. Ah, yes, but this has that cryogenic upper stage, which consumes quite a lot of power. I have to remember that. Uh, how much EC per second? 0.92 EC per second. These do two, right? Those do two EC per second. But, let's see. These do 1.6, so if I have a bunch of those stacked with these, it should work. It should be fine. Should, being the operative term. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure that you guys are on a action group. And we need a uh, fairing on there, right? Ah, uh, it's got a big old NASA logo on it. Ah. Me, not that I don't like the NASA logo, it's just doesn't quite fit. Man, that is a uh, <laughs> oversized fairy. Um, but it should be fine if my Delta V numbers are all right. Yeah, release, fire those. Yeah, that's that's good.
All right. There we go. Moon uh, converter module is what this is. All right. Go ahead and get this guy launched. And we're going to see if it works as advertised. And I am going to try and do the automated launch because it's just so much easier. And it's no big deal if it does end up screwing up again. All right, so. Ascent guidance. 100 kilometers. Yep, yep, everything good. Limit Q. Uh, auto stage. Want to deploy the solar panels? Actually, that's fine. Because the solar panels should be able to deploy without getting messed up by the fairings. All right, let's hit it. There is one thing I need to check. Is what kind of harvesting capability do I have? As far as drills and the like. Because what I might want to actually do next is... Design the harvesting vehicle. Well, no, I think I need to get all the actual facilities. On the station first. One thing I put a um, a reaction wheel on here. You can jettison the fairings. I'll have to use the uh, RCS, which is fine. Got plenty of monopropellant. Electric charge is good.
and start to orbit. And actually, I'm thinking... That, uh, yeah, this rocket was way overkill for what I was trying to do here. We, ha we still have 1,200 meters per second of Delta V left in that center tank. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get it to the moon, which is a kind of a routine... A routine process at this point. I think, is that going to bring us in front? Switch my focus to the moon because that's going to let me know exactly. Yeah, that's that is not what I want to do. Right there, we're going to need to uh, yeah swap around. Our approach. 700. Four ninety seven. That's not bad. All right, execute the node. Though I could have kept it on the collision trajectory and then modified from there so that the uh, the center booster would dispose of itself. But this is going to put it in an orbit that is not anything we're going to need to worry about. Now, electric charge here is going to drain. All right, well, let me uh, just pause until we're there, ready for the burn. All right, be back in a sec. All right, about ready to burn. There we go. Stabilize and then jettison the booster. Give us a little nudge here. All right. Let's go ahead and warp us out to there.
All right, so now we're going to want to circularize at the periapsis. And I did actually engage the engine. I did. Good. Alright, we should be able to get to that, uh... Yep, node a lot faster. And this should be a fairly routine docking. I just had to go and say it, didn't I? Well, I don't anticipate any problems. Alright, so... Wow, we're on a fairly inclined trajectory here. Let's see, that's going to get us to within 0.0, .0 kilometers. Let's go ahead and edit that node ever so slightly. One point two kilometers. Actually, that little accidental movement that I did was perfect. One point two kilometers is more than fine. All right, execute the node. Uh, can you rotate? No. I'd rather turn the RCS off, if at all possible. Reaction wheels on the actual um, control units should be able to rotate this thing. Yep, there we go. Alright, so now we want to match velocities with target at closest approach. What is our closest approach now? We are way off. Yep, that RCS screwed up our trajectory. Well, let's see where it puts us. Since we're already that screwed up, let's just go ahead and make it official. As long as we don't hit it, that is the only real concern. Is will we hit it? Three kilometers, that's not bad. 3.8? Could be a lot worse than that. Okay, so we no longer need that. towards a target. Uh, 
All right. Let's start, uh... Let's start nudging our way there. Five meters per second. Getting inside physics range. It's still fairly stable with this uh, engine on. I'm definitely going to want to detach from the the engine here. And this is probably a good spot to do it. Well, actually, let's do this. Let's do anti-target. So I want to slow down to about uh, one meter per second relative. And then detach this module here. Actually, we want to do full, we want to do retrograde, not anti-target. And then let's use the main engine. Put a little bit of thrust through there, good. All right, let's go ahead and orient towards target one more time. We're gonna let the, the propulsion module here just kind of drift past. There we go, there's that spinning Spinning ring. All right, couple the node. Let's go up to about two meters per second relative, and then keep us heading in the right direction there. Alright, I'm going to want to fly past the station. Okay, I'm actually on collision course right now. Rotate 90 degrees. There we go. We are inducing some rotation.
Oh boy, I have no communications. Of course, we are in the blackout. Oh, shouldn't we be getting communication? Oh. I still can't quite wrap my head around uh, how the communication system works. Because you'd think I'd get a relay off of that, right? Because there's antennas on there, right? There's antennas on there. There's satellites here. I got line of sight there. So I don't know why we're not relaying. And there's plenty of sats that have line of sight. To Kerbin. Maybe I just need to look it up. Alright, well, I'm just going to have to... Uh, warp to the point that now we finally... Have, and now I need to... Uh, fly back. Actually, I want to be heading, uh, in that direction, somewhat. Slow down. Alright, now we're in shadow here. Electric charge is fine. Alright, now I want to make sure that I'm controlling from here with my docking camera on. And I want to dock to that port right there. Okay. Roll negative 83. I really want to be, let's see, 90? I think we want to, I want to be at 90. Okay, we're moving away.
Okay, so that should put me at the right spot. Yep, there we are. All right. Zombie is close to aligned rotationally as I can get. at 0.5 meters per second. I mean, I think I might be... I think I might be pretty much right on target. Adjustments. Okay, we're docked. But I didn't quite get rotated how I like. Let me see if I can fix that. Dock. Okay. All right. Control from there. Docking camera. Let's try this. my translational thrusters are causing me to rotate. Come on, forward. Forward, please. There you go. Okay, I think that is much better. That I think that's as close as I'm gonna get. 
to be improperly aligned. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, adventures in docking. All right. So the next thing I need to bring up is going to be um, storage tanks. I think. couple of storage tanks to at least get started. Yes. That's going to be the next plan here. So let's head back to the Space Center. I need to make sure that I have the tanks I'm going to need. Because, what does this converter unit do? I need to check its inputs and outputs. Uh, we're going new. Hey, there we go. Uh, utility items. Convertertron takes ore, an electric charge, and creates liquid hydrogen, or lithium, or liquid hydrogen and oxygizer, or liquid fuel. It also could take water and split it into liquid hydrogen and oxidizer. Um, but I think we're going to use it to make lithium to fuel our magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters. Oxidizer. Liquid fuel and oxidizer. Monopropellant. Yes. That's what we're going to do. But we're going to need ore. So, I need a tank that can hold ore. Hmm. It's not going to be a fuel tank. Unless it is. Unless I don't actually have any tanks that are of the size that I'm anticipating or wanting here. That's 1.25 meters. Do I have a research of some description where I can unlock better storage? High performance fuel systems. Argon tank, xenon tank, argon. No. Orbital assembly. No. Orbital megastructures. Mobile launch platform. Orbital shipyard. That sounds like it would be uh, interesting.
Advanced logistics. No, that's not what we're looking for. Heavy landing, advanced landing, field science. There. No, UH-15 holding tank? Yeah, it holds ore. That is what I need right there. I do have some mining excavators. I do have some mining excavators. Hmm. How much ore? Do these things hold? Out of curiosity. 300 ore. Okay. And what can that be converted into? If we're going to do lithium. Okay. So, one ore turns into 18.70 lithium. Okay. If I were to use this modular truss with lithium tanks inside like this which is what I want to use that holds 3000 lithium no 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 it's 30000 lithium So, what was those numbers again? Hold on, let me move that off screen. Um, eighteen point seven. So thirty thousand divided by eighteen point seven. Sixteen hundred or to fill that tank. So, if I had four of these, where are they? Wrong tab. So let's um, say, for example, I went and grabbed one of these. Right? And then through four of those on there. That's 300, 300, 600. That's 1,200. Now, what if I went with instead doing four? Because I think it, what I actually want is six. Uh, we went and did the three. No, not, not that. Thank you. 
So that's 300, 609, that's 1800. That would be enough ore to fill one of those trusses. Yes. But I want to do that, or this. I think that. Now, of course, each of these containers is going to be empty. Can I balance this weight out a little bit better? Because that wobbling was really annoying me. Um, or rather, the mass. Let's see, it's a half a ton. If I use a procedural battery, can I get the diameter out to two and a half? No, I can't. Let's turn on the center mass. Okay. I can never remember what the right the right key is there. No, no, not threes. I need four. Four. There you go. All right. All right, so we'll need that. We'll need some batteries. And then we'll need some RCS fuel. Which should balance it out fairly well. All right. I think that will work. As an ore storage tank. And then we'll probably use the same thing because this thing's only five tons because it's empty. Alright, 
payload is going to be the same fairing base with... Oh, wait. That's right. We want... Um... Oh, I forgot to deorbit that other, uh, that other um, upper stage. Yeah. That shouldn't be a big deal. You can always grab it and deorbit it later. That should be all the parts that we need to make that work. We throw on the Gladius Heavy Lifter. And what kind of Delta V? Oh yeah, tons. Absolutely tons. Probably don't even need the heavy. What if I went with just the uh, just the main booster? Forty-seven hundred meters per second. It would probably just need some strap on uh, SRBs. I'll uh, give it a little bit extra oomph. All right, you guys. I want to make sure that we get some. Reaction wheels on there. Okay, so if I went with four, four SRBs, what type would I want to use? These I definitely provide the kick needed. Let's see, what about these? Those might be a bit better. More thrust burns shorter. So it doesn't get quite as much delta V, but should be should be sufficient. We'll just need to put on a proper nose cone there. Fire. Yep. And then our launch clamps. Actually, you probably need those there. And fairing. Okay, so this is the moon, uh, or 
Um, tank one. Save. Though I don't think we're going to have time to launch that and dock it today. So we're about out of time. Well, we're a little over time. But I'll go ahead and um, we'll take care of that next episode. So for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.